Hi everybody, this is Krishna Day and if you are just starting to use Periscope with your Android phone, I'm going to do a live demonstration. In fact, I've got somebody very special here with me today. It is my chief Android Periscope advisor and operator, I should say. So this is my daughter, one of my three daughters, who happens to have an Android phone. So I've been using Periscope for a little while on the iPhone. I've got a number of videos that are published. You'll find links to them on my Twitter account. And so you'll find me on Twitter, at Krishna Day. But today I want to do a live demonstration on how to get started with Periscope on your Android. So apologies if the lighting isn't brilliant. I want to get this done as quickly as possible for you. And so that's why we're here just doing my iPhone recording the Android device. I will do some other videos and other screenshots later. So the first thing, obviously you're on here anyway if you've got your Android device and you've worked out how to log in with your Twitter account. One thing that's different for Android and the Twitter app is that you can have multiple accounts. You probably already worked that out, whereas I'm on an iPhone and I have to log in and out each time on Twitter. But over here on Periscope, you should have had the opportunity, obviously, to join. So what I um, see is that if you've got questions, I'm going to do my best to watch out for those questions. I um, want to walk through this and then I'm going to invite you to ask your questions towards the end. If I miss anything, because it's hard for me to do the demonstration, talk it through and watch out for your questions at the same time, as well as instructing my great um, person who is with, who is with me, um, it may be hard for me to pick up all those questions. So let's get started. So we're here on Periscope and uh, I see a few of you have worked out that there's hearts to be shared. Yeah, and that's the reason that Periscope actually developed the hearts, which is done by tapping the screen. So uh, if you tap the screen, you give hearts. The objective of that is that you can actually therefore give feedback at different stages in a broadcast to tell somebody that you like what's going on. And so that's the object of it. There are lots of people who have done gamification with, with hearts. That's not typically what you'll find on my stream, but you might want to watch out and that might be right for your organization, your product or brand. So let's look right here. And we've got at the top, that's the television symbol. That's about who's live or who's got a, a replay that's going in the streams of content, people that you're following. We'll come to how you find people to follow a little bit later on. And so if I just scroll through that, I can see people doing events and also I can see replays. The thing to notice is that on the replays, that's down to you as the Periscope producer of content. Once the event has finished, once, once a live stream has finished, what will happen is that you will be able to allow that replay to play for up to 24 hours. There is a setting that you can go to to make sure that you automatically save your recordings. That means that you can repurpose your recordings. So that's the first thing to note. So just as a recap, up on the top left-hand side on Android, um, you actually see a little television screen. Now, this is going to be a little complicated for those of us who are trying to teach people um, information using both devices because on the iOS device, it's actually at the bottom. So television left on the top left, that comes down. In fact, there you go. There's see my test event. And so that is content that people have allowed to be um, available there for up to 24 hours. The other thing you'll see when you go back into that, if you're the person who's managing that content, you actually are able to see how many people viewed, um, how many people watched a replay, how many people are watching from the web. The next button over is the globe. So if we go there, we see content that's happening. Um, if we go scroll back up to the top, we actually see content that's happening live from across the globe. You sometimes find at the top of both of those streams, the television one and the globe one, so your local uh, people that you're following and the globe content there, where the Periscope is recommending you might be interested in content. But you can see here that somebody is live and we can scroll down and we can see other content of, of uh, things that are happening right the way across the globe. If we go in there into the one that is live at the moment, um, we'll be able to see, as you are doing, um, where there's an opportunity for you to 
um, see content happening, uh, listen to it. We're going to just turn, make sure the, the audio is turned down for a minute. But let's go into that live event. Who knows um, what we're going to find, but uh, there we go. And so we just let's just turn that down. You can see there that somebody's uh, sharing hearts. They've got a broadcast is too full. So typically when you get over 100 people, we found that actually Periscope uh, doesn't allow people, more people to comment. Um, if you click on that little button there where the people are, the uh, little person's head, you then get the opportunity to share the broadcast. And that means that you could share that content right the way through to other people who are going to be um, following you and you can therefore recommend content. You see the three little buttons here? That, if you click on that, con that, that's where you can then decide to hide the chat or if you think that it's actually inappropriate content. So unfortunately there are, is some spam content on Periscope. You can actually report that broadcast. So we're just going to get rid of that for the moment. And if you actually scroll down, you can see people who are live now. So if we want to click on any one of those people in terms of their profile, so just pick on any one of those, Meg. And you then see the biography of the person. So a key thing for you to do is make sure that you have a good bio on your profile. It looks at the minute on Android that you do not have the opportunity to make a change to it. You can on iOS. I'm sure that will come. I can see the person has how many followers. I could therefore click, see who they're following as well. And uh, I can also, with one click, follow that person. Let's get rid of that for a moment. And if we go back and actually um, look at the rest of the stream, we can also, if we see somebody who's sharing content um, in the live stream, we can just click on that comment that they make on any, or anybody who's just joined the event. So just click on somebody in a minute. Let's just wait for a moment for somebody else to come in. Um, but when you click on the profile of somebody commenting or somebody who's joining, so any one of those, you can then see the profile, see more about them, follow them, but importantly, block a user. I'm not suggesting this is somebody we should be blocking, but just to demonstrate this. The reason for this is really important for that you know that you could block somebody um, if you're viewing something, if it's inappropriate content that they're sharing. As I said, there is sometimes spam content there. So let's move out of that live stream and let's go over. And we've got another button here at the top, which is the people button. And that allows you to then quickly see who is actually coming over and is follow you're following them and you're connected on Twitter. So with one click, you could actually add uh, people to that. Up down on the bottom right, um, again, different from on iOS, there's a search bar. If you click that search bar, that allows you to go up and then search for people. So you could search for somebody that you know by name. Um, you could search for somebody uh, that you know by location or people that you know by location. But let's just do this test. Let's type in there um, a function, a job. So you could put in anything. You could put in marketing manager. You could put in CEO. Let's try the word accountant. So by typing in the word accountant, and in fact, we could also put other words in like accountant in Dublin, but if those uh, name, those words that you're searching for are in somebody's bio or in their uh, profile in terms of their, their name on, on Twitter and obviously in here, then what we can do is, as a result, see those people. So, so just a handy tip to actually find people to follow. You might know friends of yours who are starting to use um, the tool and you can search for them. As I said, it also picks people up from your Twitter profiles, but importantly, you could search by other keywords, and that's just a demonstration of using the word accountant. So let's get out of that, and let's go and look at our profile. So thanks for those of you who are joining me. I'm just doing a live demonstration of how to use Periscope on your Android device. And so what we can see here on the top right is we see a little profile picture, and this is where you can see your own profile. Though, now, I'm sure this will change in future updates, but there doesn't seem to be a way on Android for me to currently change my profile. So change your profile description um, and make sure that that profile description is actually on Twitter and it will import it across. You can see who you're following, um, who, who's following you, and I can see there I've blocked some people. Now, important one here, obviously I can scroll down and I can see I can send feedback, look at the legal information, and also log out. So that's how you're going to be able to log out. But let's go to settings. 
Um, one for you to note. Now, I have got most of these notifications turned off here. So you could actually have a notification coming on about somebody, a followed user, somebody who's uh, therefore going live, um, people who are sharing your um, followed user shares a broadcast, somebody follows you, and suggested first-time users. This last one is new for Android. I've got these turned off. This is not my phone. But here's a really important one. Auto save broadcast. Do you see this? You want to make sure that before you do any broadcasts that you turn that on because that means that you will get the opportunity to save the, the video to your camera roll. From there, I typically use Dropbox, take the video from there onto my hard drive and from there I can edit and, for example, take uh, the content and put it onto YouTube or onto other platforms or host it yourself. Okay, so that's all the settings. Let's. What about if we want to do a live stream, though? So for those of you who are just joining us here, there will be a replay of this. I'm just going through a quick demonstration of how to get started with Periscope on your Android device. So if we go back to the original home stream, stream here, we're going to look now at how do we do a live broadcast ourselves. So what we've looked at so far is what you see in that top television screen. That's all the people who you're following and um, you can see their live broadcasts and the replays that are available. The world signal, symbol in there, the globe symbol, is actually things across the globe uh, that are happening and you can watch that. We looked actually at then people and how you could see who you could follow from people from Twitter and in addition searching for people. Um, and then the last, the last thing that we took a look at, look at then was our own profiles. Down on the right hand side is where you're going to start your own broadcast. Now, I should say that there'll be lots of reasons that you might want to use Periscope. You might want to use it for your organization, your business communications, and that's what I typically do and that's what I teach as one of the ways that you might use Periscope um, in your uh, marketing or employee communications. However, you might want to be using it for fun. So um, I'm sure you'll build out your own plan. And if you've got questions, uh, do make sure that you come back and follow me. Um, just as a reminder, you'll find me um, on Twitter at Krishna Day. But let's go back into this button. We're not going to go live from here, but I just want to show you a few things that you need to be aware of. So you click that button and that's how you're going to start live. Now, a few things you're going to see here. You see the button that says live, start your broadcast. And so right at the top, I can see public or private. So that's a really helpful tip because if you're going to get started using Periscope and you're not confident about using it at this point in time, you could practice and you could have a private broadcast. It allows you then to invite specific people to, in to join you. Maybe that's friends or family. In fact, one of the things I do is I've got several Twitter accounts, ones like a, a sandbox, things that I, I test and, and play with. And so I invite myself. I just don't come in on the other device, but I can, therefore, as long as I'm inviting somebody, I can then go ahead and practice. Particularly if you want to do things like you're not so sure about how it's going to be in terms of um, the audio and you're not sure about you being in front of the camera. And so that's a great thing to do is to, to test first. So you could set up a private broadcast. There in public, the thing you see here right underneath, it says broadcast title. So a couple of suggestions for you here. If you've got somebody who's on Twitter who's going to be joining you, you could add their Twitter name in that broadcast. You could put a hashtag relevant to your content in that title as well. Now, there's a whole set of other content we can talk about in terms of how you promote your live streams, how you get people to watch. But just think about that title that's there. Um, and one of the things you can have there is... Um, the words like you would do in terms of a tweet, but include at mentions and include hashtags. Now, it's really hard to see. It's just quite dark on the screen, um, but you can see three other little buttons here. The one on the left hand side is your location. So you can um, allow people to see where you're sharing from in terms of the location. So we click on that. It will um, say location sharing on or I can therefore for me, I'm going to have that turned off. The middle button is actually allowing people to comment. 
So if I click that on, it says only users you follow will be allowed to comment. And we can obviously turn that so anybody can chat. Um, I know that some people like to restrict that. Sometimes that might make people frustrated. But remember, you can block people if it's inappropriate content that they're sharing. The one on the right hand side is an important one as well. And that's about it will post to Twitter. So for today, for this live stream, I also shared it to Twitter, knowing that some people will actually get a notification there and they then also be able to watch it on the web. They can't comment and they can't um, uh, give you hearts if they're watching on the web at this point in time, but we're going to turn that off as well for the moment. So that's just a quick overview. You can do private broadcasts to get you confident and, and practicing with uh, Periscope, but you could also use that strategically um, in terms of I was doing that, uh, giving one of my clients some education on using Periscope today, and we did it all by private broadcast. So it's only us that had access to it. You can make it public. You can put your title in there. Remember the app mentions of uh, people who you're in interviewing. If you are at an event or you might want to use that hashtag for the event or other relevant hashtags. And then those three little buttons at the bottom there. And it, then you will go ahead and start the broadcast. We're not going to do that today um, at this point in time, but uh, we have done a practice. So I hope you found that of assistance. Um, if you like the kind of tips that I'm giving here and reviews of visual content marketing tools, you can follow me on Periscope. So I appreciate it if you decide to do that. And also you'll find me on Twitter. So if you do have any questions, I'm going to watch out for them here. I don't see any questions coming up. That's one thing I should add is that sometimes we don't see questions for, for whatever reason. I had that happen to me today. I was doing a, a live broadcast with somebody and we actually saw some qu questions come in and then the questions stopped. They were still being sent in, but for whatever reason, it's just a bit of a known issue or people are having problems with. So if you do have follow-up questions, find me on Twitter at Krishna Day and I'd be really happy, happy to cover them off for you. But uh, thanks so much. Um, also, thank you very much to my chief Android Periscope advisor, who was here, a very good hand model. I think you'll agree. Um, thank goodness that she had an Android phone so we could do that. So thanks again for watching. Do let me know if you've got any questions in terms of over at Twitter at Krishna Day. Thanks so much.